In today's video, I'm gonna share with you three key points to better lob shots. Make sure you check out this video. John Watts here from the True Golf Academy. You've joined me at my short game area. And today's video, as I mentioned there in the intro, is gonna be about lob shots. So it's an area that a lot of golfers are scared to hit, but actually if you've got this in your arsenal, you might not be playing a lot of the times, but it can really recover you from the odd situation on the golf course, save you a few shots. I'm gonna share with you three key points to better lob shots. If you're new to my channel and you haven't already, please do consider subscribing, at least two instructional videos a week. Right now, we're gonna jump into this one. So as you have seen there, that was a successful lob shot. What did I do to achieve it? Well, there's a couple of key points that I really want to run through. Nothing majorly technical. One is there has to be some commitment. There has to be a relatively long swing. So you'll have seen from that angle, I swung to shoulder height, I swung through to shoulder height. No stopping, no deceleration. Was I hitting it hard? No but there was a commitment to a, a smooth, fluid swing. And that does take a, a little bit of practice to get used to. It's a mindset thing, because we're only hitting it around 20 yards, that middle pin that I was going for there. I'm trying to land it, I don't know, 17, 18 of those yards. So we're really only playing this shot where we've got to go up in the air, stop the ball very quickly, very little green to work with. So this is a last resort, and you may play this shot in certain situations more than others. Match play situations against someone, maybe a Stapleford where it's for a point. You're perhaps not gonna play it as much in a medal round unless you're confident with the shot. Now the confidence is only gonna come from practicing, but it's making sure you're practicing the right thing, and that's where I come into it. So one is commitment to a smooth but long fluid swing. Now there's a couple other key points. What I tend to see going wrong, and this is similar to in bunker play, is players having their pressure, their weight going backwards or staying too even. What you'll have seen there with that one is actually I was moving towards the target. So I'm trying to feel like I'm actually moving forwards and getting my pressure onto my lead foot. So I'm really getting my weight, my pressure going onto that lead side. That is a key point. And, and this is the slightly trickier thing. We want our weight going forwards, but we don't want our handle pulling. So we're not trying to actually force our hands forwards because that would deal off the golf club and take off the bounce of the golf club. And the bounce is really that when we're opening the club face that we would do in a bunker shot here, the leading edge is now sitting up in the air. So we're starting to use the sole of the club to hit the ground first. And we've got to make sure there is a little bit of grass underneath the ball. So we're not going to play this from a really bare lie. Uh, this has been cut uh, over the weekend, Monday morning today. So there's not a lot of growth on it. Uh, it's about as bare as that perhaps I would go. Luckily, there has been some rain which has softened it up. If it's really firm, really tight lies, you may not play this shot as much. But if you've got a little bit of grass, a little bit of cushion under the ball, that really helps you use this loft, use the bounce of the golf club correctly. But as I mentioned there, if we push our hands forwards, we take off that loft, we take off that bounce and the club could start to dig. So we've got to accept we are going to be hitting the ground, but we're going to be hitting the ground with the trail edge of the wedge there. So I've opened that club face. So the key points, one is this long fluid swing. One is this weight pressure going forwards towards my lead side. And the other thing to do is allowing the club to catch up with our hands. So although our weight is going forwards, we do not want our hands to be driving the golf club forwards. We've got to feel like the club is catching up with and passing our hands. And a great way to focus on that that's not overly technical is focusing on this finish position, almost allowing the club to get vertical. So there has been here, you can see, an uncocking and an unhinging of my wrist. So if there's cock and hinge in the way back, I'm undoing that through the shot. Some people may feel that's throwing the club, and, and that's fine. Getting that sensation of sort of throwing the club, tossing the club away, to allow it to catch up with my hands. We do not want to be driving our hands forward. So a common mistake I would say is players will get their setup correct, but back up with the weight or drive their hands forward. Maybe a combination of the two. So weight going backwards, 
hands going forwards and actually I hit that okay considering, but I struggled with the distance control. I actually got half decent contact, but we've really got to get that key points or this couple of key points, committing to a long fluid swing, making sure our pressure is going towards our lead side and allowing the club to catch up with our hands, okay? So we are not driving our handle forwards. So let me go ahead and, and try and hit a decent one here. Again, you know, I am gonna give myself a half decent lie because I wouldn't play a lob shot from a terrible bad lie. I'd look at other options. I'd look at what I have to do to, to, to get the ball close to the green or give myself a chance of a putt, even if I had to play away from the pin and give myself a 20 footer. Uh, perhaps if I go to, one of the closer targets here, which are really tough. The toughest one would be on the front right of the green here. Very little green to work with. There's water right, water long, a bunker short. You know, this is a, a tough, tough shot. What would be the percentage play? Well, definitely playing out to the left, middle of the green, excepting there's a ridge there. Hopefully it's gonna come back down that and I'm gonna give myself a 20 footer. But this is a time where we're, perhaps we're going for it. So I'm gonna aim the club at the target. I'm gonna have the ball relatively far forwards in my stance. I'm gonna open the club face, and then I'm just gonna turn my body to counteract that a little round to the left of the target, which I wouldn't do so much in the bunker shot because we're not hitting the ball here, but we are in a lob shot getting some ball contact. So I've just turned my body a little to the left. The club face is open before I grip it. That's the setup. The only things I'm concentrating on is a smooth fluid swing pressure going forwards and allowing the club to get vertical, to catch up with my hands. As I said, this is a tough one. Oh, it's a little long. It was a touch safe. I'd probably take it, it's on the green, it's 10 foot past the pin, got a little bit lucky using that ridge. Let me have one more go at it. This is a tricky, it is a tricky pin, you know, but this is, where if you've got this as a skill and the situation's right to play it, this could be your up and down rather than your three shots. So this is saving you one. And it's a shot you might only be playing, you know, once a round, once in a couple of rounds, maybe a couple of times a round. We're not gonna be playing it tons. So I'm aiming the face at the target, ball forwards, open the face turning my body a little bit around for me as a right-hander to the left, a bit more open to counteract that face angle. I'm going to go for this long, smooth swing and committing to shifting my pressure and allowing that club to catch up with my hands. Oh, it's similar. Very similar to the last one. I'm struggling to get it to that closest pin there. Almost just gotta be a little bit softer with the strike point. I'm, I'm finding a little bit tough from the length of grass here with a little bit longer, you'd find actually the club would be going more underneath the ball. And the good news is all of them are on the green. Uh, they've all given me a chance of trying to make that putt. Um, the first one I hit to that small middle flag you can see there is the closest, the tougher flag, and maybe it was conscious in my head of not coming up short to that right pin. But you'll have seen there lots of height, lots of elevation, just flying a couple of yards, three, four, five yards, too, probably three yards, four yards too far. So we're not talking about way off. But when you are playing lob shots, because you're now opening that face and increasing, I've got here a 58 degree and I'm taking up to closer to 80 degrees, it's harder to control the distance the ball goes unless you're doing a lot of practice with it. So it's hard to know when you've got the face that open, how far the ball's gonna go without some practice time. And this practice time ideally is gonna be casual golf or even more ideally on a short game practice area, driving range if need be. I hope those key points have helped. The three key points is a quick recap. One was commitment to length of swing. One was pressure going forwards onto our lead side. And one was allowing the club to catch up with our hands. So we're not driving our handle forwards. We're almost getting into an impact position where my handle's about level with the golf club. If it has helped, hit the thumbs up, share with as many golfers as you can. Drop a comment below of how you're getting on with it and any videos you'd like me to film. And I'll see you guys next time.